Every once in a while, the social media activity of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gets just a little bit spicy. And we had an instance of that in the past 24 hours over, in fact, her Twitter account. She was called out on Twitter by the Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University, who tweeted at her late yesterday. Knight Columbia sent this letter to AOC urging her not to block Twitter users on the basis of viewpoint. I'm not gonna go through the whole letter, but I have read it. And what they're effectively arguing is because recently a court ruled that Donald Trump could not block Twitter users, she should be held to the exact same standard. Now, they needlessly add in that she's blocking them based on the basis of viewpoint, which she will respond to. I have no idea why they've included that. And she would say that her at AOC account is not her official account. It's not her you know, representative account, it's her personal account, so she can do whatever she wants. They don't accept that, and the court doesn't seem to either. And all of this is based on the fact that Donald Trump has decided not to use at POTUS, and he has instead decided to make an official government channel out of his personal Twitter account. So to some extent, he's ruined it for everybody. But she did respond to what they said, tweeting, I have 5.2 million followers, less than 20 accounts are blocked for ongoing harassment, zero are my constituents. Number two, harassment is not a viewpoint. Some accounts like the Daily Caller posted fake nude photos of me and abused my comments to spread it. No one is entitled to abuse, and so I would add, you could say if she gets harassed, she could mute them. But the thing is, if someone is spreading fake information, violent rhetoric, sexual rhetoric like that outlet did when they decided to try to make money off of fake nude photos of her, and they add her in it, she, whether she wants to or not, is not just being harassed, she is. She has to be a part of the harassment. They are exploiting her to some extent by being able to tag her in that. Now, an easy solution to this would be, okay, you can't, as an official government of official, you can't block them. But Twitter needs to actually take seriously this sort of harassment. That's not the world we live in though. Unfortunately, Twitter is not gonna take this sort of thing seriously. And women, especially in media and politics, entertainment, they are harassed brutally and there's almost never any consequences. So that's the world we actually live in. And she goes on to say, people are free to speak whatever classist, racist, false, misogynistic, bigoted comments they'd like. They do not have the right to force others to endure their harassment and abuse. And I think that we can all understand that sentiment. All of us except Laura Ingram though, who decided to add this, fewer than 20 accounts. Because the issue she has is that AOC said less than 20 accounts rather than fewer. Which makes her either the biggest fan of Stannis Baratheon that I know of or just kind of an a-hole in this particular case. She unders, I'm sure that she is harassed, that she receives death threats and rape threats. She is after all a woman on the internet, but that's what she decided to add. Now thankfully, AOC decided to go unfiltered in response to Laura Ingram. So she quote retweeted saying, see, you're a neo-Nazi fan favorite. And I don't block you for defending white supremacist viewpoints and mocking gun violence survivors, which is a devastating point. It's both 100% accurate about Laura Ingram and also true that she clearly does not go around willy nilly blocking people for their political viewpoints. She just has chosen in limited cases to block people who have tried to rope her in to her own harassment. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know if she has the legal right to actually do that. If a judge has decided that public officials have to not block people, then fine. That should be applied equally to Republicans and to Democrats. But social media outlets like Twitter have to take this more seriously, especially considering the credible death threats against this particular representative. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.